the crowd is going crazy. Oh my God. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. We're proud to present our next speaker, Tomer Levi. He is the CEO and co-founder of Logs.io. Please give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Woo. Great. Thank you, guys, for coming end of the uh, end of the conference. Excited to be here. Um, we're going to speak about why log analytics is important. I think probably most people who attend AWS reInvent understand that analyzing data and making sure you have uptime um, and developer can push to production is, is critical and log analysis is definitely an enabler of that. Um, I'm going to speak about the ELK, even though I'm sure you all are familiar with the ELK. Um, I'll give you some, some stats and data about how common it is. Um, we're going to go over a few requirements of what does it mean uh, to build an ELK. And it's okay if you're building a stack for one app and you know, it's a couple of gigs a day. You're, you, you'll be fine. You don't need this presentation. Uh, but if you want to build something which is hyperscale, which is highly available, which is secured, uh, this is where uh, we learned a lot uh, and happy to share it with you. Um, again, production grade, what does it mean and how do we make sure that uh, it doesn't fail when you actually need it? Because probably this is the most common thing we hear from customers is when, when they shit hit the fan, when it, there's a production issues, the servers are generating more data. And then the first uh, thing that breaks is their uh, Elasticsearch cluster. Um, so we'll talk about that as well. Um, I'm Tomer, I'm the CEO, uh, one of the founders of logs.io. Um, we're a log analytics company. Uh, we offer the ELK stack uh, as a cloud version, um, but really focus on making it an enterprise grade version. So we have um, a bunch of machine learning capabilities that scan the data and find um, critical exception. They find what you should actually care about in the data. We added a lot of capabilities around alerts about um, single sign-on, um, making sure the data is compliant so we can have SOC 2 and HIPAA ready and GDPR, um, global distribution, about a thousand companies use our system from a uh, hundred different countries ac uh, across the globe. So in, in, in our journey, we've been meeting so many people who are using the Alex Tech, building an Alex Tech, uh, use different solutions, and obviously the experience we have acquired over the last a uh, couple of years, uh, building a multi-petabyte, highly scalable, highly available environment, uh, which is used by, by the way, many of the uh, um, companies uh, which, which have their booth here. So one th second about logs, every machine, every device in this room from this watch to this TV talks, they generate um, logs. And this is how developers troubleshoot their environment. And with log data, you can do uh, so many things. You can have, obviously, operations, production, but you can also uh, have a security um, threat detection, a, s a security incident event management. You can have a product management tool by just looking at the logs. You can do IoT. Um, what we focus, and I think many of the companies here focus, is m first and foremost production, and then understanding security and how uh, are there any threats uh, in the logs uh, that can be discovered using a log analytics solution? Um, really, in a nutshell, about the ELK, there are many vendors, many options. Some are great. Um, the ELK is the most common log analytics platform in the world. Uh, you'll see in my next slide, there are about half a million companies using the ELK stack today. Um, it's really simple. It's open source. It's fast. Um, and then, the challenge is, and, and we hear that all the time, oh, you know what, it's okay, it's hard to manage it, it's hard to scale it. It's, it's good when you start it, even if you do it on your own. Uh, if you take it from Amazon, it's also a good service. But it's um, very much focused for a, f a small use case. Uh, as you need more capabilities, when you need to connect it to your other systems, uh, when you want to rely on it in production, this is where it's sometimes harder, and this is what we're going to cover today. I'll try to give you my tips from our experience doing it. Uh, security, the data that reside in the logs can be very, very sensitive. 
Um, you might have user and password. You might have IP addresses. You might have PII. Um, you need to make sure the data is encrypted. You need to make sure that not all users can access all types of data. This is extremely important, um, and we'll touch on that as well. Um, again, this is how we look at the market. Most of the companies in the world are not using any proprietary solution for log analytics. Most of the companies are using the ELK stack. Um, let's talk about requirements. So you, you have a stack. You're using a solution. You have to make sure you cover these. Maybe not all of them are relevant. Uh, first, don't lose any logs. Okay, This might be trivial. Um, as I told you, about 1,000 companies use our services for log management. When we work with them and we look at their current implementation, about 1% to 5% of their logs are being dropped. And the first reason is they're mapping the way Elasticsearch sets up their schema for the, their NoSQL database. It's actually a schema of, called mapping. And mapping issues uh, cause logs to be dropped. Uh, we've seen that across the board. Um, and if you look at your uh, log lines for Elasticsearch, you'll see a lot of mapping exceptions. Everyone have them. This means that you're losing data. This is number one um, requirement for a solution. So I'll, I'll talk about how to avoid that. Uh, terabyte scale. If you keep even 100 gigs a day over 10 days, it's already a terabyte scale. Um, many companies in here ship terabytes a day. Uh, and when you replicate the data to make sure it's highly available, it becomes multi-terabytes. And if you want to protect against bursts, it's multi-multi-terabytes because you have to make sure you have overcapacity. Um, if you build it on your own, building a scalable solution that automatically scales uh, extremely hard. Uh, the AWS service, uh, you can add servers, but that will not add you more resources because once you have a lot of data and high load on the systems, trying to add another node will cause all the data here to synchronize with the other nodes, uh, usually taking down the entire cluster. Uh, so as opposed to um, workers that can be automatically scaled, scaling a big data platform uh, on the fly when it's under load is close to impossible. Um, security encryption, um, we'll talk about ports, <coughs> uh, mapping, we spoke about that. How do you make sure that your mapping is correct? How do you make sure that you monitor these mapping issues and make sure that your logs are not breaking and are not conflicting on the types? A very common issue. Um, setting up the retention that you need, deciding how long do you need the data. Usually you'll need operations data, maybe a week, maybe two weeks. Uh, but sometimes some of the data you want to keep it for a month or two uh, for security purposes, for trend analysis. So think about creating multiple indices. Um, and how do I make sure that, especially for compliance, how do I make sure I have a copy of my data for a long duration? So you can use um, Elasticsearch snapshots, and I'll speak about that as well. The challenge with snapshots, they're usually not forward compatible. So if you will do a, a snapshot on Elasticsearch 2.5, and you will try to open it on Elasticsearch 5, when you actually need to go back a year back, it's not going to work. So I'm, I definitely advise people to look at uh, um, the um, snapshots and make sure you have, I, I suggest a different solution for archiving. Uh, Logstash has a solution to put it in S3. This is a great solution, um, and I would consider that. Um, again, alerts and more advanced capabilities, definitely something you have, but we don't have time to cover that. Um, really, uh, you have so many ways to ship the data from Logstash to Filebit to um, FluentD, uh, multiple ways. Eventually, you want to get the data in a secure way. What we see work best is Filebit. So this is our recommendation. It's a, low, uh, a lightweight agent. It doesn't take a lot of resources. It compresses the data. It encrypts the data and then sends it over. Extremely important if you're sending it across VPCs. Um, and and um, one really recommended way. Another way is FluentD. Also a recommended way, especially if you work with Kubernetes. Uh, one of the challenges of FluentD is on the, when your backend is not responding fast enough for the agent, it might get stuck. So make sure you have a good queuing system on the front end. Let's talk about that. Very simple, ELK, Elasticsearch, Logsearch, Kibana. You send the logs, your user, everyone is happy. 
how do we make it terabyte scale? Um, queuing, number one, most important part. Redis, Kafka, um, RabbitMQ. Think about logs, think about a burst in your traffic, think about a server going through a restart, a database purging a log file. You might be getting 10 times or 20 times more data than usual. If you do it without a queuing system, that will shove it down Elasticsearch throat. And when you do it, Elasticsearch usually chokes, goes down, and it's dead. And now you have to restart it. You have to resync all the shards. It might take a day. It might take, some, take an hour, depending on the size of the environment. So queue the, systems, uh, queue the data on the, on the entry uh, to the system. Um, how do I do user access? You can use the Amazon service. They have some solutions. Uh, again, very basic, but when you're running an enterprise-grade solution, um, you want to make sure you can connect to Okta or one login or Active Directory. The data within the log, uh, logs are really critical in terms of security. It can be exposed vulnerabilities. Um, again, dissecting which user can access which kind of data is, is critical. Um, my suggestion is, if you really have to do this separation, create multiple ELK clusters. Um, I don't think that in the open source you'll have a better solution than that at the moment. Um, deletion of the old data if you're running your own stack. Make sure you have a, a cron that runs curator. The curator or the, is, is a process that deletes the retention. Very simple to run it. Very recommended to use a process called optimize, or now it's called force merge. Uh, what force merge does, it goes through the old indices so of yesterday, and it merges the segments. Uh, this dramatically improves the search performance, reduces the open files. Um, again, for a terabyte scale, you must have that. Uh, you have to think about doing it uh, also puts a lot of uh, load on the machines, on the disks, while you do it. So be very cautious, monitor the environment as you run the force mer merge across the old uh, shards. Um, multiple uh, master nodes, that's obvious. You have to have a at least two availability zones if you're running on AWS. Master nodes fail. They have more and more work to do, especially if you have more mapping. Uh, something really to take into consideration. People ask me, how many nodes do I have to have if I want to have a terabyte of data a day? Uh, the answer is really hard. There is no silver bullet. Uh, think about the moving part. The moving part is how much do you daily ingest? What is the size of the shard you need to set up? Um, it's something you need to manage. And it really differs as you have more fields, as you have more log types, as the tables become bigger and smaller, as the machines have more memory or more storage you need to reset the, the shards, the size of the shards. Uh, I wish I could come here and say, hey, you put, put it at 25 gigs a shard. I don't have that solution. You have to test it. Uh, take one server, put four shards, five shards, load it. It's almost linearly scalable. It's not. Um, but try to find what is the optimal shard size. Uh, on our blog, you see a lot of information, a lot of benchmarks we did. Feel free to use it. It's on logs.io slash blogs. Uh, we've done a lot of work on, on trying to understand that. Uh, I'll try to speak a bit faster since we have one minute and 40 seconds left. Um, how do you make sure that you're not losing data? So again, when you push to Elasticsearch, you might get exceptions. If you're pushing through Logstash, these exceptions go to waste and you don't really know that you lost data. One to five percent of the data in your environment is currently being dropped. Uh, you can check that, go to your environment, test it. Um, you can put some kind of a process that looks at the exceptions, collect all the logs, collect all the failures, and try to understand which mapping, for example, is broken. I'll give you an example. You have an integer and a string, and sometimes the, if the first log of the day when the mapping was created was an integer, and then it becomes a string, Elasticsearch cannot understand. It said, oh, that field is, a, is, a, is an integer, but I'm seeing a string. How can I fit it together? So he's, what the last research will do is drop all the data and say, OK, mapping mismatch. Sorry, guys, goodbye. Uh, developing on your own something to resolve mapping issues is extremely hard. We've done that with a process that you can try to implement. We basically look at all these exceptions. 
we go back to the, we grab the logs that failed, we fix the mapping, sometimes we flatten the logs uh, to make sure we remove some of the fields or put them in a, in a, in a non-schema uh, fields and add them back to the system and then help the customer understand that. But just bear in mind uh, uh, that you might have that. Um, some more tips. I have 10 last seconds. 15 minutes might not be enough for Logs.io. I'm going to be here outside. You're welcome to uh, speak to me. Uh, this is our infrastructure. It's going to be online. Uh, look at our blog. There is an ELK uh, Slack channel. Uh, just about 200 ELK professionals speaking about issues, Elasticsearch and other. We are there. We're helping and trying to add more content. Uh, feel free to jump on this Slack message. Just look for ELK professionals on our website. Uh, this is me. Um, thank you very much, guys.